Welcome to a code report solution video. My name is Connor. And in this short video, we're just going to take a look at how to solve a problem in APL, my favorite programming language. So this question is from a contest that took place yesterday, Saturday, March 27th on leetcode.com. It says uh, number of different integers in a string. You can read through the full problem statement if you want, but basically you're given a string that has both lowercase letters and integers. And what it wants you to do is pull out all of the contiguous sequences of integers and convert those into numbers and look at how many uh, unique numbers there are uh, in the original string. So here we've got uh, in our first example, 123, 34, 8, and 34. So if you extract those out and then take the unique number, you basically have um, three integers, which is pretty straightforward. So if we take a look at the top solutions, so if you go to the discuss tab, you can look at the most top voted solutions and we take a look at each of the top four. Um, we're not gonna work through these in detail. We're just gonna take a look at the average length. So here's a C++ solution, manually going through. Here's a Java solution. If we go to our next tab, here is a Python solution. The next tab is, I believe, another uh, Java. So, no, this is C++ solution. And last but not least, we have another Python solution. So all of these on average are about plus or minus uh, 14 lines of code. And in APL, we're gonna solve this in one line in about the number of characters that there are lines in other solutions. So let's hop over to our APL editor ride and solve this. So here we are in our ride editor. I'll leave links in the description if you want to download this and to start playing around with uh, APL. So here is our string preloaded in. And the first thing we need to do is identify where the uh, integers are in our string and then extract those out. So we can make use of an algorithm in APL called uh, membership or member of. And basically, if you pass this a uh, an array, or in this case, a string, and then another string as the right argument. So here we just want all of the digits. It's going to give you back an array that represents uh, one for where an integer exists and zero for where a non-integer exists. So the way we can really easily look at this is that if we sort of catenate uh, S, I believe syntax is 0 0.5, this is going to put these on top of each other. So you can see um, wherever there's a one, this corresponds to an integer in the uh, original string. And what's super cool about APL is that we don't actually need to spell out the digits zero to nine. We can just go quad D and that'll do the same thing. So quad D in APL is the digits and quad A is uppercase letters. Uh, so that's a cool little shortcut. So now we have basically our uh, partition array of uh, booleans where the one maps to a integer. And now we can combine this with an algorithm called partition. And that's basically gonna take every contiguous sequence of ones. And when given another argument, which will just be our original string, it'll basically put each of those contiguous uh, sequences of ones into their own substrings. So this is gonna look like basically uh, membership composed with our digits. So that's gonna be quad quad D, and then partition, and then we want our initial string. So we can just uh, pass this identity, and we give this S, and this is basically going to give us a sublist. So uh, this sort of notation is what's called a fork in APL. I won't go into detail, um, but basically it's the equivalent of doing this, S membership with uh, digits, and then going uh, partition, and then S over here. So note that S shows up on um, both sort of the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Um, so if we do this, we get the same uh, sequence, but instead here, we can basically just uh, partially apply um, our member of with our quad digits, which is gonna be compose. And then we can just replace this with identity or what they call same in APL and then bring the S, so sort of factor that outside and just use a fork. So we're doing pretty great here. So at this point, all we need to do is um, uh, use the unique algorithm. So this, what looks like a U, um, in the monadic case is unique. So it's basically gonna remove duplicates. And then all we need to do from here is to take the size of this nested array and then we're done. 
So this basically is our full solution. Um, technically, we're missing one small thing here. And if we hop back over to our leak code, you will see that one of the examples has uh, leading zeros. So we actually, here we have one, uh, zero, 001 and zero, zero, 001. So currently, if we were to use this as an example, let's hop back to APL. So if we store this as our second example, um, and we replace S with T here, and we get rid of our tally, this is gonna show up as three strings. So what we really actually wanna do is we wanna convert these to numbers before we take the uniqueness. And to do that, we just basically do our execute command, AKA uh, two integers when you have a, a string of numeric uh, digits or characters. And we do this over, and now this is basically gonna give us, without unique, it's gonna give us three ones. And so when we then go unique, it's gonna drop this down to one. And so when we do this, this is tally. And if we wanna put this in a function, which is you know called solve, we basically are just gonna replace our parameter on the right with an omega, and we're done. So this is the full solution in APL. And if you count this out, this is exactly 15 characters, AKA one more character than there are number of average lines in the C++ slash Java slash Python uh, solutions. So hopefully this starts to paint a picture of why I love APL so much. Even though this is very um, hard to read if you don't read APL, it is amazingly expressive. We're using you know four or five different algorithms here, partition, membership, tally, unique, and because these are all built into the primitives in APL, it is super easy to build up super powerful expressions and solve problems that take, you know, double digit number of lines to solve in other languages very, very um, expressively in APL. The last thing that I will say is that if you are interested in learning a little bit more about APL and you are watching this before March 31st, which is roughly three days from now, there's going to be a free half day conference for APL beginners or those that are APL curious. I'll be speaking giving one of the talks called Algorith Algorithms as a Tool of Thought. I will leave a link in the description down below if you want to register. And hopefully this got you a little bit more curious in APL because APL is awesome. Hope you learned something and have a great day.